I was born in El Salvador. There was civil war going on. My parents said we were leaving for Christmas vacation. So when we got here, surprise, we're not going back. I came here with no say whatsoever. I internalized the anger and the easiest way to get it out was pretty much at school with kids who, you know, made fun of me because my accent or, you know, the way I looked or the way I talked. Made certain choices that were not the best choices and skipped school a lot. Um, ninth grade, I don't think my mom knows still. Got into a couple of fights trying to show that I was there, I stand my ground, and I was not gonna be pushed around. But also, I was letting out that rage that could not, I could not let out in my house. In school, growing up, I had a lot of difficulties. I was the one who was distracted. I was the one who lost things. I felt like I was not good enough. When I was in um, grad school for social work, I was diagnosed with ADHD and a learning disability in writing. And, a rock was taken out of me, like, whoa, you mean I'm not dumb? You mean I'm not slow? You mean I didn't, you know? You need to, to know what's going on so you can work to your full capacity. Not knowing affects your self-esteem, your self-confidence, and you have to live through life like that. And I think if you're always positive and you always try to show hope and you always individualize and if you always give positive energy, you will receive positive energy. I had an opportunity to volunteer in El Salvador working in a hospital and I worked with teen pregnancy. Uh, most of the kids were either gang members or they were the girlfriends of gang members and you know it gave me a different perspective because this is a you know going back to El Salvador and, and trying to help um, it was a different culture, and I discovered how different I had become since I left. With the younger kids, I would not be sharing how I was. I think with the older kids, I did share because they were in that life. So my point was, you can make a choice. You can control your own life because if you don't control your life, somebody else will. That was my message when I share my life experiences with them. One of my first uh, cases was a young man who had difficulties at home and he was very gang involved. He committed atrocious crimes and, you know, I always remember him and I always remember his beautiful smile and his dimples and, and I remember him loving his mother. I think it was a child who happened to make wrong choices. He knew I was sincere when I was helping him. He would refer his friends to me. I would get kids in my door and say, hey, you know, so-and-so told me that it was cool to um, come and see you, that you were cool, that you were not gonna tell on me or snitch on me, that, you know, um, that you were for real. Many of them could not read came to school because otherwise they would be on the streets. Many of them had parents who beat them up. They feel adults don't understand, that they forgot how they were or the choices they made when they were teenagers. You always have to look forward. You always have to look for tomorrow because tomorrow there's going to be an open door. Tomorrow there's going to be an opportunity. Tomorrow is going to be a chance to change to be inspired. And they inspire me because they had it so hard. They had it so difficult in life that when they came, it was just, I want you to be here. I want you to know that somebody cares. And I want you to know that someone has hope for you. And that's always what I said. Someone has hope for you and believes in you. When I applied for college, I didn't have the $50. Um, for the application, but a co-worker who worked with me did and she gave me those $50 Because she believed in me You know in our profession sometimes we have really rough days and some you know difficult days And I always encourage social workers to talk to other colleagues to talk about their cases to take care of yourself via exercise or dancing, you know Zumba and running and 
you know, sometimes I get my colleagues in from school and, you know, kind of say, come on, let's go, you know, and that gives you a balance. Find something that you enjoy. You enjoy and create it. The reasons why I did, you know, life is because um, it was something that I was passionate about. Why I did the mentoring program is because I'm passionate about it and it's not part of my job description. Those letters, those thank yous, those um, you were my friend, you were my angel, is part of you know keeping me alive and keeping me motivated and keeping me coming back to work with a big smile because that is what it's all about. I try to balance my life, you know, physically emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually. I spent two, about two to three weeks in China seeing how their educational programs work, getting to know the kids there, meeting with parents, and meeting with, um, of course, um, government members, and it, it was a great experience. Here in the United States, every, every time they meet me, they say, oh, so where are you from? You know, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm from El Salvador and I have to give a big explanation. But in China, I was an American. You know, I was really an American. Um, I looked differently, I had a different last name, but I was an American. We're a global society now. We just cannot be um, in a small box anymore. We have to understand, we have to learn, we have to ask. We have to research because we will be better human beings by doing that. Family keeps me center. Um, you know, my family, my two sons, Tony and Alex, um, I'm so proud of them. And I think when I see them healthy, when I see them happy, when I come home and they give me a hug and tell me how much they love me, that keeps me motivated. Um, I always feel that we always have to walk this pathway and, you know, we, we find rocks and we find pieces of sand and we find flowers and, you know, um, some of them you just walk and you don't notice. And I think what keeps me motivated is that I want to be that bright flower in that kid's life or in that kid's path. And when they look back, it's always bright and it's always there and it's never going to leave and it's worth it. Every morning I come, it's worth it. I have a great gift and I can say, I am going you know, to work and I am going to make a difference. I went to work and I made a difference.